Hi, this is Brian Turnbull from the National Free Flight Society demonstrating the carbon application um, method for the Freedom Flight helicopter for Science Olympiad 2025-2026. So I'm doing just a short segment of fuselage material first and I'm going to get a little puddle of Duco cement, probably about the size of my thumbnail, a little more than a half an inch on the wax paper. You could use parchment paper too. Then I'm going to grip one end of the carbon toe and I am going to push the carbon toe into the glue puddle as I drag it through the glue puddle very slowly. So pushing it in very slowly so that there's always some fresh glue squeezing against the carbon toe and pressing down on it which flattens the carbon toe and then the recommendation with the kit is you do this from each direction so you can see one end of the carbon toe is all fluffed out and I'm hoping when I drag it through the other direction that will go away and we'll see how it goes. So I'm dragging it through the glue puddle and it turned out pretty good. All right, so I would actually recommend that you give it a few minutes to dry before going to the next step maybe five minutes. Um, I'm going to do this pretty much right away, but um, it'll be easier to handle if you let the carbon toe get just a little bit stiff, drying, the glue drying. So one thing you you can learn about a bottle of Duco cement is if you, you see that it's the glue is coming out, it's wicking out as soon as I pick it up. If you squeeze the Duco cement bottle without actually squeezing it, just putting a little pressure in this direction, it goes back in. So this direction goes out, this direction goes in. So that way you can control the glue a little bit, it doesn't go everywhere. But you notice I didn't actually dent the tube when I squeezed it. I just applied pressure. So this is the method for applying the glue to the wood that the kit recommends is to use the micro glue applicator. So this is called double gluing. So I'm applying the carbon toe to the midpoint of the fuselage. And the first step is to get a layer of glue on the fuselage. And we will squeeze out a bead of glue. So this bead of glue is maybe a millimeter and a half. Uh, maybe um, two millimeters thick and tall. And as I do a little bit, I'm going to do a couple inches and I'm going to smooth it away. So what this does, it puts a layer of glue on the wood that then soaks into the wood. So then when you bond the carbon toe um, to the wood, you're really bonding glue to glue. So that's, I'm actually going to snip this thing off. I don't need it quite that long and I'm going to snip this off right about there. So I get just a little thicker bead of glue, which I think will work a little bit better. Maybe even snip it off right there. Just a little bit thicker and it'll flow a little quicker. All right, so the carbon toe, um, is not super easy to handle uh, if you just grab the ends unless you let it dry for maybe 10 or 15 minutes so i'm going to put a little bit of tape on each end of the carbon toe the carbon toe is this is the flat direction and use the tape as handles to lift it up and and handle it then i'm going to position it on the fuselage and just see that i made the carbon toe piece just a little longer than the um, fuselage area that I'm going to cover. 
So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to set this over here. You notice that I didn't stick the tape down completely. I want these little handles sticking up. Then I'm going to put another bead of glue. So I'm not using the recommended method in the kit where I'm, where they suggest you doing the next step with acetone. I'm actually just putting a second bead of glue onto the stick. Then I'm putting the carbon toe right into the glue, sticking the tape down, which keeps it in place. I put my finger on the center and I wipe to the end and then center again and wipe to the end and then get my fingers out of the way without making a mess. So that way you don't have to use acetone. You get a really strong bond. You're gluing glue to glue. And um, I'd give it maybe 10 minutes to dry. I got a little more glue than I really needed there. Pretty thick bead, but that's okay. Duco cement doesn't weigh very much. It's 10 times lighter than super glue. So that I would set aside for maybe 10 minutes. Then I would do the opposite side. Then I'd do the top edge and the bottom edge. So the side of the fuselage and the kit recommendation um, does not have the carbon going all the way to the end. So after you apply the carbon, the easiest way to cut, off, cut it off clean is to put a blade down this way, sing, sharp single edge, and pull the carbon toe back against it. And if the blade is sharp enough, it trims it nice and clean. Just like that. So now I have, I applied the carbon first, I did the cutoff later. I don't have to make, try to make it perfect to length. So I should have picked a little sharper blade, but that's okay. It's working fine. All right. All right. So that's a piece of fuselage. The comments I see on the forums and in the Discord channel mention that there's just barely enough carbon to do this whole um, set of laminations. So if you want to be conservative on how much carbon you use and you want to not use the tape handles and cut oversize, then you could um, laminate the, get the carbon all dragged through the puddle of glue first and then let it harden for a good half an hour. And then you can cut it with a sharp single edge in order to make pieces the exact size you want to use. So I'm doing that with the spar. So this is the, um, lo the inner trailing edge spar, which gets two and a half inches of carbon applied. Um, oh, I didn't mention my setup here. This is just a cheap $1 lab ruler. It's very thin so that while it's holding the spar or the fuselage in place so it doesn't move around on me, um, the spar is sticking up off the table so that I can get the glue applied to it. If I used a thicker ruler or something thicker, then I would probably be gluing the spar to the ruler, which I've done. You just have to make sure it doesn't actually bond permanently. So this spar has a fish mouth on one end to go around the red tube that's the housing for the center axle. So you have to make sure that you're putting the carbon on the correct side, of course. So the fish mouth is this way, so that the red axle can go here, and the fish mouth curves around it. So the carbon goes from the fish mouth end and two and a half inches down the spar. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna pre-glue it. So we'll get a little bit, very thin bead like that, and then I'm going to wipe it off. And normally I'd give it just a couple of minutes in order to let that glue soak in nice before I applied the carbon. Um, this time I'm going to do it relatively quickly. And these pin blocks you can see are just hard pieces. Of, these are quarter inch um, thick by half inch by one inch pieces of uh, hard balsa. They keep the ruler from moving. These pieces are smaller and thinner because the spar is small and thin. I don't want to have the spar, the carbon, um, these little pin blocks actually to interfere with the carbon application. And you will glue these to the spar while you're doing this, just a little. But if you pick it up in 
five minutes when the glue is starting to firm up, you can peel the pin blocks off and then move on to the next one. All right, so now I'm going to put, and you notice I put a mark here to say be sure and put the glue, the carbon, on this side. And here's a mark where the carbon uh, ends, the two and a half inches on the three inch bar. All right, so now I'm going to put another bead of glue, not using thinner, because I think it's hard to use the thinner, in my opinion, unless you have a lot of experience using it, acetone thinner. Um, what tends to happen is you're trying to use it in a conservative way and you end up applying too much and making a mess and dissolving all the glue off of the part that you're working on. So I'm going to hold this piece in place with a fingertip and then just position it and I'm just going to tap it because I know if I push on it and spread it, I could make a mess. All right, and I'm going to narrow that part up because the carbon kind of is a little wider than the spar. That's not a big concern, but I just clean it up a little bit by brushing on it. Then I'm going to tap it just another time. Tap, 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 tap. And I'm not wiping it because I'll probably just move the whole piece of carbon back and forth. So you notice I didn't completely cover the fish mouth because you need that available. So there's like a fraction of a millimeter of wood on, on this end. And then the carbon is exactly where you want it on that end. So I let that dry five minutes and do another part. So relatively simple, not a big deal. Good luck with yours. Uh, once again, this is Brian Turnbull with National Free Flight Society, uh, Science Olympiad National Tech Committee, uh, creating this video for you.